Hey what's up guys, it's Nick2 and today I'll be giving you guys some tips and other helpful bits of information along with sort of a guide on how to make a really good build within The Division 2. In this game, creating builds is much more intricate and in-depth than it was in the first game, which is kind of why I've been reluctant to make this video in the first place because it's very difficult to lay out all the pertinent information in a succinct and coherent fashion just because of the sheer amount of information that there is to go over and some things are a little bit challenging to put clearly into words. Regardless though, a good bit of people have asked me to make this video, so I figured I might as well, it might as well help a little bit of people at the very least. Here is a disclaimer though, I am making this video in a pretty lazy format honestly, so I'm just going to be speaking off of the cuff without a script as to make it much easier for me to actually make the video, but this will probably result in the video being pretty long, so if you're not a fan of long videos, you have been warned. I know that I could make the video technically shorter, but I just want to make sure that I get as much information out there as possible. I'd much rather be more informative and have a little bit longer of a video than potentially miss out any information. If you do think I forgot to mention something specific or if there's something that you would like me to have mentioned, please leave a comment down below and maybe I can make a part two of this video as well. But anyways, if there's anybody out there that doesn't want to have to deal with setting up a build and all of the pain that that might ensue, uh, or maybe needs help farming or anything like that, that, feel free to email me at nick2biz at gmail.com and I'd love to help you out get set up with the perfect build, maybe help you farm, anything like that. But with that out of the way, let's get into it. Alright, so getting into the meat of the video, actually sorry, one more thing that I should mention. Um, if you would like to see a video of me just making a build from scratch, so you can see my thought process and kind of just the overall process of putting the pieces together, seeing you know what I want to do with a build or whatever, drop a like on this video and I will make a video of me just starting a build from scratch if you'd like to see that and if I reach a certain amount of likes I will do that. Alright, so first thing is first, I think when making a build the first thing that you want to do is figure out what you want the build to accomplish. What, what do you want to get out of the build? Usually when I go to make a build I have a set goal in mind. Maybe I want to make a build that's going to be really good for trying to clear a heroic mission because those are a huge pain in the ass. Maybe I want to build that's really good for group play for like heroic bounties so that I just do a whole bunch of damage and it's good in a group. It's like consistent damage. Maybe I want to build that's good for the dark zone and I have a whole bunch of HP. Maybe I want to build that has a lot of armor. Maybe I want like a healer build. Maybe I want to build with a whole bunch of damage. There's a million different variables there, right? So first off, I would kind of figure out what type of build you want. And that is usually going to tie in with what talents you're going to go for. So like if I'm going for, you know, a pure damage build, I'm not going to be able to unlock something like Unstoppable Force. So if I'm going pure damage, I'd probably want Berserk, right? Or if I'm going for a lot of defensive and going a lot of armor, I'd want Unstoppable Force. I'd make sure to meet meet this threshold. Or if I'm using like the build I'm using now, 577, I'm making sure that I'm getting 7 defensive for Unstoppable Force and 7 utility for On the Ropes and then staying at 5 so that I can unlock the talent. Optimist, right? Figuring out beforehand what talents you want to use, depending upon your playstyle, stuff like that as well. And figuring out the overall goal with your build I think is incredibly important, otherwise you're kind of just going to be aimlessly getting gear and not really knowing what you're looking for. Additionally, this is potentially even more important than setting up just, or just figuring out what you want to get out of the build, but also what gun do you want to use? Uh, as of right now, there are a lot of different guns that you can use that are very strong. You can use an AR, you can use a rifle, you can use an LMG, all of which are going to be very strong in PvE. Some are a little bit better in certain situations, but this game is actually pretty decently balanced compared to the first game, so you can use kind of whatever you want. Um, typically, I'm going to lean towards using guns that are going to be mathematically the strongest, so for like an AR, if I want to use an AR, I'm most likely going to use a P416 because this is just going to give me more damage output than any other AR will. But recently I've been using the AK just because it's fun to. Like I can kill stuff just as fast, not just as fast of course mathematically, but I can, I, I feels like I kill stuff just as fast and I still kill stuff really fast comparatively anyways, so I might as well just have fun with it, right? So if you have a preference for a certain gun or a certain gun type, just roll with it because as of right now, these things are pretty balanced in line with each other and the NPCs die pretty quickly if you have a good build. So I wouldn't worry too much about having like the perfect gun unless you really care about min-maxing damage potential and stuff like that. But if you just have a preference, feel free to go for that. Sorry, my cat is scratching a scratching post right now, so it is very loud. Um, so yeah, figure out what gun you want to use. Maybe you want to use an AR, rifle, LMG, whatever. The reason this is important is because this is going to affect your build in terms of like what chest piece or what other piece you might want to run that is going to have extra damage for that weapon type. So for example, for an assault rifle, I'd be using a Fenris chest for the AR damage, or I could be using Fenris on knee pads or something else. 
I would just really try to prioritize this because 10% extra damage, no matter what build you're using, is going to help out a lot. The reason this is important, you might just think, oh, well, I could just swap out the chest piece, whatever, it doesn't really matter. But let's say I'm trying to make a 577 build, right? This is very difficult to actually achieve because you need like the perfect attribute rolls on every piece. If I were to just try to swap out the chest piece, right? It's not as easy as just doing that because different chest pieces have different rolls, which I'll definitely make sure to dip into. But as you can see right here, Fenris chest has two talents, three attributes, and one mod slot here. Whereas, you know, an overlord chest is going to have three attributes, one talent, two mod slots. But the mod slot potential is going to be different than on a Fenris chest. So it's not as simple as, oh, just swap out the chest piece. Because if I were to swap out the chest piece and then put in mod slots here, I'd have four, ten, six, which isn't getting me to five, seven, seven, which I need to unlock all my talents, right? So that's another thing to keep in mind. So now that you have kind of an idea of what build you want to use, this segue is good into my next point, which is something that's very important to know when trying to make builds, is that certain gear pieces are kind of stuck as to what they can roll, and all gear pieces can't roll the same. For example, like I said before, a Fender's chest is always going to have three attributes, whereas an Alps chest is always going to have two, or a Petrov is always going to have four. And this doesn't only apply to chest pieces, this applies to every other piece in the game, and it depends on brand set. And also certain brand sets, like certain names of brand sets, can also have certain roles as well. To be honest, this is a ridiculous amount of information to retain, and after 300 hours of playtime, I remember probably about like 60% of these things, so I'll leave a link to a spreadsheet in the description if you want to see possible gear set roles and like what you can get on certain pieces. But honestly, over time, you'll figure it out and you'll get used to you know how all of this works, but pretty much just know that certain gear pieces straight up just can't roll certain ways. Like if you're saying, oh, well, I, I really want to use a roll D, but I needed to have the, the mod slot here, and you'd probably, you'd probably think to yourself, oh, well, I just need to get a better roll and have one that has a mod slot. Well, unfortunately, the way that it works, a roll D just can't get mod slots, right? And there's no, there's no way for you to know that without just having played the game enough to know that that just doesn't drop. And even if you played the game a lot, you could have just, you know, gotten unlucky. And it might seem very confusing because Alps gloves seem very similar to a roll D gloves. They just have different brand set names, right? But... Alps gloves have a mod slot, and Araldi gloves don't. Same thing when it comes to knee pads. Gila knee pads are the only knee pads that have two mod slots, or Gila mask is the only mask that has a mod slot, right? All of that is going to be very confusing, and without knowing what the potential roles are, it's very difficult to set up a build, and it might be very confusing trying to make something and thinking, oh, I really want to use this, but I need it to roll with three attributes or something like that when it straight up just can't. So it's important to know what can and can't roll certain ways when trying to make a build so that you don't so that you're not waiting to get the perfect piece that is actually impossible to get i think that is one of the main takeaways from this video is because a lot of people will say oh well you could just swap out the brand set and just get a different brand set bonus it usually isn't as simple as that because if i were to swap out a brand set to try to get to a Raldi, i'd miss out on a lot of mod slots this is obviously just for this example but i'd miss out on some mod slots and some attribute rolls and then I couldn't get to a total of 577 because, for example, if I were to try to swap out my gloves or something, I would lose a health roll here and a utility roll. And these, both of these are going towards this total here. Like I said, all of this is difficult to remember. I fortunately have played a lot and have a relatively decent memory, so I kind of remember most of these things, at least in the ways that it pertains to my build. Some things I can't remember. 100% of course, but like I said, I'll leave a link to a spreadsheet in the description so that you guys can always have something to reference to when theory crafting or figuring out what build you want to run. This is probably going to be the most important takeaway with this video because a lot of people when they approach a build, they try to prioritize brand sets as opposed to individual roles. But as you can see with the variance of how certain things can roll, sometimes you just stop caring about brand sets, kind of like the way that I did with this build because Gila, RNK, DNH, None of those things are giving me additional damage, but they, they have enough mod slots on them and rolls in total for me to meet the requirements that I need to, and that ends up being more beneficial than going for brand sets themselves. As of right now, the brand set bonuses are rather undervalued to the point to where they aren't worth going versus trying to meet individual talent thresholds and just getting better rolls overall. You might think, oh, well, I could go for a Wyvern backpack and get 7% crit damage, but if you have a Wyvern backpack that doesn't have weapon damage on it, it immediately becomes not worth it. And that's just one example, right? There's a lot of people that will try to go for a certain brand set, but then they'll sacrifice the roles on their gear and or even maybe talents. And the second that you do that, 
you're just losing more damage than you're gaining. And I mean, most of the brand sets, like I said, aren't going to net you that much damage unless you're doing something very specific. Brand sets usually don't matter all that much unless you need that certain type of piece to get a certain amount of rolls, such as a Gila backpack, which is going to be the only backpack that's going to have a total of five attribute rolls or something like that, right? I think it's worth mentioning, this doesn't only apply to attributes, this also applies to the mod slots and what type of mod slot they can get. Some backpacks can get system mod slots and can only be utility or can only be defensive or only offensive, and some backpacks can only have protocol. Protocol and system, if you don't know, are completely different. As you can see here, I have a utility system on my holster, but I have a utility protocol on my mask and the utility protocol is going to give me way different roles than the system one would typically speaking protocol is going to be significantly less beneficial than a system would for example if i take a look at just it's easier to you know get the information if i look at offensive so an araldi holster is always going to roll offensive protocol right so if i try to mod it with a protocol mod most I can get here is like 1.5% weapon damage, 2.5% headshot damage. But then if I look at an offensive system on my chest piece, I can get 6.5% in total. So system, 99% of the time, will be more beneficial than a protocol mod. And certain pieces can roll protocol, certain pieces can roll system. It doesn't even matter, like, you know, on, on gloves, you could literally get... I think gloves are all pr protocol, actually, but on backpacks, some backpacks roll with a protocol mod. Some of them roll with a system. See utility protocol right here on a wyvern backpack, right? So it all just depends on which role you have, and that's another thing to keep in mind. I thought it was worth mentioning, at least because a lot of people might not know the difference. But yeah, protocol and system mods are pretty significantly different and you would want to prioritize getting as many system as possible if you're going for damage or something like that. Moving on to probably what is the second most important takeaway from this video is how gear budgeting works in this game. So when I first played this game, and I'm sure when all of you guys first played this game, you didn't understand why certain roles were always so significantly lower than other roles. And you might be wondering when you go to recalibrate something, why is my weapon damage here capped at 7% if on my other chest piece it caps at 9% or my other chest piece it caps at 4% or something like that, right? Or 12%. It's very confusing initially, but basically the way that it works is every gear piece has its own budget. You can also look at it in the way of like a pie, right? Or like a pie chart. So some percent of that budget or pie chart is going to always go to armor. Some percent will go to every individual attribute role here, the talents and the mod slot. I think the talents and the mod slot are static though on certain pieces, but mainly the variance in between individual pieces is going to be between the armor roll and then the attribute roll here. So for example, right here my armor roll is going to be pretty low, which means that more of the budget is going to be allocated to these attributes, meaning that I can get higher attributes here because less percentage of the budget or the pie is going towards armor and it's instead being reallocated to the attributes. This also applies to the individual attributes themselves. So maybe ideally here, I'd rather have a little bit less skill power, which means that I could have inversely more weapon damage so that I could have like 200 skill power. Theoretically speaking, I could have 200 skill power and like 10 or 11% weapon damage here, right? And this is going to apply to every single piece. And this is why sometimes like here on a pet drop chest piece, for example, since it always rolls four rolls, there is less budget that I can get to go into every individual roll. So it'd be much more difficult or maybe impossible to get a weapon damage roll of like 10% or something because there's all these other stats that the budget is being spent on. This means that certain pieces such as Petrov or certain pieces such as Gila are not going to be able to get as high rolls as other pieces. Another example of this would be Gila gloves, right? The highest AR damage I could possibly get on any piece of AR of Gila gloves is always going to be 8% because the rest of the budget is being spent on a whole nother attribute slot here. But on an Araldi glove, that isn't the case. Uh, this isn't a good example. <laughs> there, there's a better example. On an Araldi glove, you can get up to 13% if you have the right roll. Unfortunately, this roll isn't very good because some of that budget is being spent on the armor instead of me being able to get a 13% roll here. So that's another very important thing to take away. It's very hard to figure out what piece you want, I guess. But just know that, you know, if I look at a backpack here, it's not like, oh, I just got, you know, unlucky with... I guess the backpack is just bad or something. No, it's just that the budget is being allocated somewhere else where like, you know, my weapon damage isn't like 10% like I'd want it to be, but the base armor is a little bit higher or maybe I have a little bit, you know, too much cooldown reduction here. 
stuff like that. That's kind of how that works. It's a little bit difficult to understand when you first play the game, but once you kind of see it as each, each piece of gear has its own pie chart or budgeting system, uh, it's much easier to understand. With this system, it actually makes getting the perfect gear much more difficult, but I actually prefer it because I think that it makes sense. Unfortunately though, in the new upcoming patch, some people might like this. I personally dislike it because I don't think it promotes gear diversity, and I, I think the budgeting system as it is right now makes a lot of sense, and it means that there's a trade-off between going for a piece of gear that has a lot of attributes versus only a couple attributes, like for example an Alps chest is always going to roll two, but that means that these two are going to be very large, but as a pet shop chest, the four, the four, excuse me, the four are going to be smaller in comparison to the two large on the Alps chest. But the way that it's going to work in the new update is on a pet shop chest here, I can just roll the weapon damage, it's not going to be capped anymore. Right now it's going to be capped at about 5%, but in the new update, I could just recal the weapon damage to like 10 or 12% if I want to, just because there isn't going to be a cap anymore. There still is a cap, but the cap that you can get from recaling is pretty much the cap that's on the gear anyway, so it's not going to be that big of a difference. The main thing there is that there isn't really a trade-off from using a Petrov piece anymore. Right now, the trade-off would be that I get more attributes in total, but I get less of each attribute. But with the new update coming out, if I can just roll the weapon damage at like 12%, that doesn't mean that there's much trade-off involved anymore. So I'm not a big fan of that, but I felt it was worth mentioning just so you know how it's going to work. These changes aren't 100% finalized though, and we don't know when that patch is actually going to come out, but I'm pretty sure this is how they want to do things. So when that comes out, now you'll know how to build around that. I think that is all of the main important information when it comes to making a build. Um, I can go over a couple small tips here really quickly, but that's the main takeaway. If there's anything that you feel like I missed or anything like that, let me know in the comments and I can make a part two. But going over just some really quick small things here, um, I figure I'll just talk about individual roles and how important I think they are, like individual attributes. So hazard protection, if you don't know what this does, this kind of helps you against like bleed, uh, fire, that kind of thing. It's pretty helpful if you get a large percentage of this. It helps you against, you know, getting naded and stuff. It makes it way less impactful. It makes you take a lot less damage. So that's pretty helpful. Health is pretty obvious. It just goes towards your total health. Armor, pretty obvious. goes towards your total armor. Damage elites helps your damage against yellow NPCs. This is very strong to get, especially on your mask, because you can get such a high percentage of it. Um, weapon damage, I think, as of right now, is the most important red attribute rolls because it goes towards your total weapon damage, whereas crit chance and crit damage is only going to be its own stat or its own value, and it's very hard to get a high amount of crit chance and simultaneously getting a high amount of crit damage at the moment, so I don't think it's worth going for those. I think it's much more worth to just go for weapon damage in total because the most I could get here is like 20% crit damage, but that crit damage is entirely reliant upon how much crit chance I have, and even if I have the max crit chance, that isn't going to be as valuable as getting just a flat weapon damage roll here as well. Skill power, pretty obvious. It kind of just goes towards your mods here. The total skill power is right here or right here. The skill power rolls that you get all just accumulate to a total, and then you can put on individual mods based on how much skill power that you have. And then there's other stats like cooldown reduction. This is just going to affect the, you know, how long the cooldown is for each of your individual skills. Other than that, there isn't really much that is worth talking about. Um, just wanted to quickly mention that for those of you that are very new to the game. But I guess the takeaway is just try to go for armor, weapon damage, and uh, sometimes headshot damage just depending. But I figured I would just give a quick layout as to how those stats work just for those of you that are pretty new but yeah that's pretty much going to be it for the video make sure to leave a like if you'd like to see the process of me making a video from start to finish let me know if you feel like i left out anything maybe i can make a part two sorry this video isn't as perfect as i would like it to be i just wanted to get this out there because i know that a lot of people were a little bit confused on how the gearing works so i figured this would help some people out there but yeah make sure to drop a like subscribe for videos similar to this one if you did enjoy it and leave a comment below and uh, what else? Oh yeah, follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash nick2. Alright, I'll see you guys later. Peace. Thanks for watching.